सो हेलो एवरीवन सो आई कंडक्ट कंडक्ट द लाइव सेशन 5 एम इन द मॉर्निंग एंड मोस्ट ऑफ यू मिस इट एंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली दैट वीडियो आल्सो गॉट डिलीटेड एंड आई कुडंट अपलोड इट सो आई आस्क यू गाइस वेदर आई शुड रिपीट द सेशन और नॉट एंड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी विद द ओवरवेलमिंग रिस्पांस एंड दैट यू गाइस वांट टू लर्न मोर एंड मोर ऑन हाउ टू प्रेजेंट अ केस Or said by Palsy, and I'm uh, very happy to share all my knowledge with you. So, uh, shall I begin? Say yes. <laughs> Should I begin now? I think I should continue now. Okay. so uh, coming out to the case presentation case presentation is a main uh, key in our post graduate exams as well as during undergraduate exams you are frequently asked to present a case during your ward rounds also and also during uh, your ward leaving so it's very important to uh, just a second <laughs> Sorry, uh, there was a patient out there. Uh, attenders had a query, so I had to attend them. Uh, okay, coming back to the case presentation. Uh, whenever you are presenting a case, uh, first thing you has you should be very comfortable, and uh, you should be well versed with the pattern on how to present the case. So coming on to cerebral palsy. Uh, cerebral palsy is a frequently asked short case, and in postgraduate examinations, you can get it as a long case. So uh, to present it, you must first know a background knowledge on what is cerebral palsy, so that you can uh, elicit particular history. And in uh, my professor say that history should be such like uh, you could make around eighty percent diagnosis through the history itself. Investigations, uh, I know nowadays. Ah, uh, in... uh, there was some connection issue. Okay, so ah uh, nowadays investigations are very frequently done, but uh, the basics, the uh, core clinical skills, they never fail. So, uh, let us uh, begin the discussion on how to present a case of a child with cerebral palsy. so first of all what is cerebral palsy uh, you frequently come across uh, children uh, who are presented in our opds and uh, in ward settings or you can see them as handicapped children or uniquely uh, able children uh, these children uh, are very weak there is overall delay and uh, they usually succumb to various infections and uh, very uh, special care is needed for them so usually you feel like as the child is growing his condition is deteriorating so that should be a progressive illness but you have to clear this in your mind that the child with cerebral palsy has a static encephalopathy static the term is very important because the insult that has happened to uh, the child's brain is static okay and this that tech perinatal insult 
to the developing brain would lead to cerebral palsy so if i have to define cerebral palsy in a single line i would say that it is a static encephalopathy due to some insult to the developing brain of the child developing is also an important keyword here so, okay so, because uh, any insult to the developed brain would not result in a picture similar to cerebral palsy it can present a seizures uh, meningitis features or uh, something like uh, post uh, status encephalopathy and that would improve over, over time cp like picture happens only and only when there's some insult to the developing brain of the child and mostly that is due to some perinatal insult that is the insult around the birth of the child okay uh, the first and foremost complaint uh, is delayed attainment of the milestones so uh, the presentation of cerebral palsy would be very different than other cases because here the history starts with the antenatal history and goes further to the birth history postnatal history your hospital stay how the child was discharged how was the child at home also how was the child uh, then feeding how did the child attain the milestones developmental history also immunization history feeding history and socio economic history is also important so starting uh, with the chief complaints the number one chief complaint has to be delayed attainment of the milestones okay so as uh, there is a delayed attainment of the milestones you have to just uh, going uh, rewind whenever i say chief complaints you have to have to remember that these could not be more than four precisely two to three are sufficient okay and you have to write them or tell them in a chronological order that means the thing that happened first followed by the thing that happened next and further so that we can know the temporality of the pathology that is happening so chronological order 2 to 3 not more than 4 chief complaints and also these uh, during uh, 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 explaining these chief complaints kindly avoid uh, using medical terminology and uh, make it uh, sound like the patient or the attenders are telling you in a layman language okay because that is preferred and that's the uh, real format how you pick the things and you will realize later that writing them in layman terms actually makes it easy uh, when you sit in the OPD setting and you uh, see uh, parents talking that tone or language. Okay, so in case of cerebral palsy, the chief complaints uh, could be uh, up to four maximum. So the first and foremost complaint would obviously be delayed attainment of the milestones. You can write it as like. Uh, inability to sit or walk noticed by the mother at one year of age inability to uh, uh, smile or fixate on the things at one year of age uh, non-development or non-attainment of uh, developmental milestones since the beginning or since birth so that would be the first chief complaint the second chief complaint would include any motor abnormality that is noticed by the mother or the relatives or the guardian uh, in the baby for example if the mother if the child has spastic uh, cerebral palsy then the mother would complain that his limbs are tightened or if there is some dyskinetic uh, cp the mother will tell there is twisting postures of the limbs so you can explain the second motor deficit as uh, what all the motor deficits the child is having so you can tell that uh, there is paucity of some limb movements right sided limb movements noticed by the mother at eight months of age okay so it point towards hemiplegic uh, cp if the mother tells there is tightening of the limbs and then certain jockey movements so that would be any idea what that would be sudden uh, tightening and then jerky movements that would be like a uh, tonic loaning activity right
ओके सो दैट वुड बी योर सीजर्स सो दैट वुड कम अंडर को मॉर्बिडिटी दैट वुड बी आर थर्ड डोमेन usually the children with the cp have one or other comorbidities so uh, you have to explain this these comorbidities after the motor deficit so uh, these could be seizure like activity there could be vision loss that the mother could say that the child is not fixating his vision or not able to respond to uh, visual stimuli or the baby is not hearing the sound doesn't respond to our uh, commands so that is hearing loss also the child may have frequent aspiration pneumonia and uh, mother may complain that he gets fever cough and drooling of saliva very often and he has multiple hospitalization history that is also one of the comorbidities so you have to uh, tell the major comorbidities that has happened throughout the course of illness then last but not the least you have to uh, tell the acute presentation with which the child now presented to us in the medical facility uh, these acute illness could be seizure like activity or if the child has again come with pneumonia then fever cough respiratory difficulty distress uh, these could be the things sleeping disturbances is also one of the comorbidities so these are the chief complaints so not more than four first would be the developmental delay second would be uh, your motor deficit third would be your comorbidities and fourth would be the acute presentation of the child uh, so coming on to the history of uh, presenting illness so history of presenting illness as i told you would start with antenatal history antenatal history uh, turn way back to entire maternal follow up during pregnancy so it will begin with what is the maternal age what are the risk factors was there any uh, the conception was uh, spontaneous or with in vitro fertilization whether the child had some abnormality on usg scans whether the mother was vaccinated or not whether uh, mother had some sort of infection or not so uh, you have to probe very well into the antenatal history so that we can trace back as to when and where the insult happened and by tracing that we can easily tell what is the etiological process behind it and we can make sense out of it right so uh, it's important that you briefly mention in a single line how the child was conceived uh, noting the maternal age your how the child was conceived whether born to a consanguineous marriage or a non consanguineous marriage then uh, born spontaneous spontaneous conception or uh, through in vitro fertilization are there any history of previous abortions or uh, still births is there any sibling with the same similar complaint is the mother or there is any family history of the same so that way we can trace back this briefly you have to sum up and then individually you can take trimester wise history for example when we come to the first trimester so you have to ask the mother was there any bleeding per vaginum that would indicate threatened abortion and also is an indicator of perinatal asphyxia or uh, fetal hypoxia the second is you have to ask the mother about burning maturation burning maturation points to maternal uti and maternal uti is a very important indicator or uh, a pointer towards perinatal asphyxia it has a very strong correlation so maternal uti is an important cause then uh, you can ask for leaking for chorionitis fever in the mother any fever with rash to rule out torch infections or you can ask whether the mother was taking supplements or not whether the mother was was on certain drugs or not uh, as you know that alcohol or antipsychotics and antiepileptics can cause uh, certain syndromes in the child alcohol can cause fetal alcohol syndrome valproate can cause fetal valproate syndrome any over the counter drug that mother has received any traditional medicine that she has received all has to be taken account in the first trimester history 
coming on to the second trimester second trimester you can uh, note whether the uh, mother is having regular antenatal checkups and there is abnormality any abnormality in the fetal usg scans uh, structural abnormality can be noted uh, by level 2 scan and you can counsel the mother for uh, medical termination of pregnancy in case uh, the situation allows if the mother is uh, it should be an informed decision right you can tell the mother about the prognosis of the child and if all she wants to keep the child she has every right to keep the child it is her child right but uh, your job as a pediatrician or as a general physician is to inform her about all the prognosis uh, of the child now the guidelines have changed that we can uh, uh, do the mtp by 22 weeks of age so you have ample amount of time to do the counseling of the mother or the family members regarding the same but ultimate decision is theirs because it is their child right uh, Coming on to the third trimester history, again you have to look for bleeding per vagina, to look for any antepartum hemorrhage, any preeclampsia like feature, if the mother had a headache, seizure like activities, intense swelling of the feet and hands, decreased urine output pointing towards eclampsia, or there's increased paleness of the mother that is maternal anemia, or uh, there can be fever in the mother pointing towards chorioamnitis prolonged uh, leaking per vagina would also predispose the baby to infection all these uh, third trimester things would come into role play also whether the delivery was spontaneous or it required induction of labor because when uh, induction comes into role play then we know that something has happened there is prolonged labor that predisposes the child to asphyxia okay uh, also you can uh, mention whether the delivery was normal delivery or it was a cesarean section in case of cesarean section whether it is an elective cesarean section or it is a emergency cesarean section uh, in both the cases you have to list the reason why cesarean section uh, is being done right so it gives around a vague idea that uh, the child was suffering from any perinatal insult or asphyxia due to which we have taken certain measures that are not natural right natural vaginal uh, delivery is not done and you have to cut the abdomen of the mother and take the baby out by cesarean section so it's something unnatural we are doing to save the baby and the mother so you have to take into account why cesarean section is being done right i think that all covers your antenatal history that comes to the birth history birth history is really important for us as a pediatrician because uh, we go to the labor rooms to receive the baby and all we care about is what happens to the baby as soon as he is out of the mother's womb okay so firstly you have to notice whether the labor was precipitous or prolonged whether the child was stuck in there for a long time because that indicates asphyxia and once the baby is out whether he cried immediately after birth or not in this case uh, as we all know the first cry of the baby is very important as it inflates the lung of the baby and uh, uh, oxygen goes to the vital organs but what happens is uh, sometimes you mistake delayed cry after birth as equivalent to asphyxia it is not so you have to clear this concept that delayed cry after birth is not always equal to asphyxia because uh, the child must uh, be encephalopathic to label as something asphyxia or insult has happened to the baby so you have to observe each and every baby and if the ch child is feeding well he's active moving all the four limbs well then obviously there's no not much asphyxia so delayed cry after birth has to be probed through uh, whether the child uh, was uh, well after the insult or uh, delayed cry or the child is normal feeding well active uh, and 
urinating well okay so uh, that would be it uh, birth weight of the child any typical posturing or sort of structure of normality would also be noted at the time of birth also during the hospital stay of the baby you have to note whether the child had some neonatal seizures or the child had a neonatal jaundice for which uh, he required either phototherapy or plasma exchange therapy because you know that bilirubin uh, during uh, neonatal jaundice and high amounts would cause brain damage that is known as bind bilirubin induced neuronal degeneration and uh, it is a very serious issue uh, because if a child comes to you with very high exchange range uh, bilirubin it is like an emergency you have to do the exchange as soon as possible uh, because once the damage is being done uh, there's nothing much left to do right so that very much comprises the birth history and during the hospital say you track whether the child is feeding well whether the child is urinating well whether the child is active or not and then uh, finally comes uh, the state of the child at the time of discharge okay so it is very important to ask uh, this to the mother was there any NICU stay was the child mechanically ventilated for a long time was the child uh, exposed to certain uh, uh, exchange therapy or the child was septic at birth that points towards that there was an uh, insult at the time of birth or around the time of birth and that gives us a clue that that might be the point when uh, the actual insult happened to the baby okay so uh, this uh, hospital stay would be very important also at the time of discharge you have to ask what was the status of the child if at the time of discharge the child was very active feeding well then, uh, then you can be just sure that okay there was some insult but baby recovered uh, babies are wonderful and uh, they bounce back uh, very quickly from the setbacks right uh, so if at the time of discharge the baby is very active and feeding well and urinating well uh, gaining weight okay so these are all positive points and you can't label that uh, he was ventilated or had some insult so it's not normal at the time of discharge if he was well apparently well then uh, obviously there are less chances that that insult has caused some uh, permanent damage and most of the child has recovered from that insult but if the child was lethargic at the time of discharge was not feeding well was not moving all the four limbs equally then you can suspect that something has happened uh, around the time of birth right that has caused a permanent damage or insult to the brain of the child and that's why he's not uh, active and feeding well like other children okay so that would be uh, your clinical status at the time of discharge then after the child is discharged he is at home and he will develop uh, so then comes the developmental history in developmental history you have to mention all the four domains and uh, the age at which they are uh, attained and what is uh, the chronological age what is the developmental age and by this you can calculate uh, the developmental question that is uh, developmental age divided by chronological age into 100 and average of those gives the uh, developmental question right so each and every domain has to be explained uh, these are gross motor milestones fine motor milestones language milestones and social milestones so you have to describe each of them and uh, what is the deficit in each area and uh, how much lag the child has uh, this developmental history tells us where the child stands right now uh, with all measures and interventions we have to take place um, whether the child requires intensive occupational therapy speech therapy or physical rehabilitation right so uh, you will sum up the developmental history domain wise then uh, you have to then 
ask about the early signs of cerebral palsy these early signs are really important for all the parents out there as well as all the general physicians out there so that if uh, some parent come with this complaint or some parent notices certain complaint he or she can uh, suspect that there is something wrong with the child and i should consult a pediatric neurologist so the early signs would be something related to the comorbidities and something related to the uh, paucity of movements or increased movements for example uh, they can be a complaint like the child is not very interested in the surroundings and not responding to the surroundings that is a sign of encephalopathy right or uh, the child may be excessively irritable or hyper responsive to some uh, outside stimulus that is also a sign of encephalopathy there could be reduced spontaneous movement the child could be lethargic again a sign of encephalopathy there could be uh, constant fisting of hand constant uh, fisting of hand persistence of fisting of hand remember it is a primitive reflex and persistent of the reflex is also a sign of encephalopathy right early handedness in the baby that he uses left side more than the right side or right side more than the left side could also indicate the hemiplegic side okay uh, also the size of the head whether the size of the head is very small or uh, the size of the head was normal at birth but it's not growing well right microcephaly microcephaly can point towards certain uh, maternal infections uh, torch infections uh, cmv you have microcephaly right uh, certain rashes in the body of the child could uh, predispose uh, can tell us that what the child has what type of infection the child has so all of these should be noted also some congenital malformation either noted at the time of birth or during the usg scan should not be missed and uh, should be uh, the child should be evaluated for the same now coming on to explaining the second domain that was our motor deficit so it is very important in neurology that you explain each and every movement as if uh, if i have not seen the child and i have my eyes closed and you are telling me something about uh, the image of the child okay so your words should be designed in such a way that you paint a picture with your words that's what my professor tells me that whenever you are presenting a neurology case you should paint a picture with your words you should present uh, your case in such a way that i am able to imagine what is the state of the child without even actually seeing the child so you have to precisely describe each and every movement motor movement of the child for example if there is any hemiplegia in the child then i can tell that uh, so there is paucity uh, of the right sided movements of the child he is not moving his right arm and right leg right so that would point towards left sided hemiplegic cp or uh, in case of spastic cp or dyplegia uh, you see that both the lower limbs of the baby they are very spastic there is adductor palsy right so what happens is uh, both of the hips they are flexed when uh, the child is pulled up to walk what he will do as uh, he is pulled up to walk he could not and there will be constant scissoring of the legs right due to the constant uh, scissoring of the legs there would be obviously difficulty in uh, moving walking also the sometimes mother notices when she is changing the nappy whenever she is changing the nappy it is very difficult for her to change the nappy and extend uh, the hips uh, that would also point towards diplegic cp if all the four limbs are involved then obviously that could be noticed when the child begins to crawl he couldn't crawl right he will drag his body on the floor that would look like uh, somehow uh, the commando crawl right this commando crawl uh, points towards quadriplegic cp if there is any bizarre hyperkinetic movement large joint movement a bellicose like movement slow rhythm movements so that would be uh, choreothoid cp right so these are all the motor movements and you have to describe each and every movement precisely in simple words you have to paint a picture with your words uh, describe the movement in such a way that the child uh, without being in front of me is in front of me i'm able to imagine what is the status of the child and what is the particular activity of the child 
uh, next coming on to our third chief complaint that is uh, description of the comorbidities the most common uh, comorbidity season like activity you have to ask whether the child has certain jerky movements certain vacant stare or the child gets a shock like movement when my chronic seizures or uh, the child has certain stereotypical movement that happened with time to time right so these would be the history of seizures also you can ask about uh, vision and hearing impairment frequently uh, uh, noticed by the mother that the child is not fixating his eyes not tracking objects or toys not seeing her not uh, interacting with her is very dissociated from the environment is not attracted by different colors and toys not listening to the rattle not listening to the sounds commands music that would uh, indicate hearing impairment right uh, and these have to be thoroughly assessed then also one other comorbidity could be uh, your uh, aspiration pneumonia that occurs uh, frequently in these children these children because of the oropharyngeal incoordination uh, could have a speech deficit as well as feeding difficulties uh, also uh, there could be bladder bowel movement bladder bowel movement uh, uh, disturbances because of the because the baby is not feeding well and also there could be uh, incontinence or there could be prolonged constipation to the baby right uh, you have to describe each and every domain very carefully when it comes to speech you have to differentiate between uh, what is extrapyramidal uh, dysarthria and uh, what is your spastic dysarthria in spastic dysarthria there would be strained speech uh, it will feel like the child is speaking from his stomach and it won't be clear and it would take a lot of effort from the baby and there will be constant drooling of the saliva and protrusion of the tongue and in case of extra pyramidal there would be jerky speech um, articulation would be articulation would be an issue there so that uh, comprises our comorbidities and finally the acute presentation with the, the child is brought to us might be an aspiration pneumonia might be excessive seizures might be that uh, they want uh, rehabilitation therapy so you have to mention the acute reason why the child is presented to us in the medical facility as of now if uh, a developmental uh, delay is noted since birth so why the child is here now and you have to mention that now coming on the uh, etiological history by uh, <laughs> eliciting all these history you will come to the point that the child is behaving that way or has developed a deficit in that way because of certain insult that has happened and easily you can uh, differentiate uh, whether the child had that insult antenatally during the birth or postnatally and accordingly you can counsel the patients sometimes these children recover sometimes they don't but uh, it is important to counsel the parents as well as uh, provide physical rehabilitation speech therapy occupational therapy to the children so that they can uh, work in a social setting and they can uh, do jobs make a living okay uh, most of these child require uh, intensive special care and the parents should be very patient about that also uh, these children because of the feeding difficulties and often uh, because of the low social economic status in our country these children are often neglected and on the top of that they have feeding difficulties so mostly these children are uh, very malnourished and due to this malnourished status they are also predisposed to various infections so nutritional rehabilitation should also be taken into account and counseling of the parents and the caretaker is very important right so i think uh, that's it uh, that's how we present a case of cp so summarizing each and every point first of all comes the chief complaints that should be 2 to 3 not more than 4 
the first is always delayed attainment of the milestones the second is the motor deficit that is noticed in the baby third is any comorbidities that are associated with the child and last but not the least is the acute presentation that the child has presented to us history of present illness which starts from antenatal history which would include, include a basic uh, a brief uh, description of how the child was conceived and how, what is the status of the mother how many uh, stillbirth and uh, threatened abortion or uh, any uh, abortion has taken place before any other sibling history any other family history then coming on to individual trimester wise history it is important to ask the mother for burning maturation because uh, maternal uti is an independent risk factor uh, then this would be your antenatal history coming on to the birth history how the child was born normal vaginal delivery cesarean section if for cesarean section whether elective or emergency cesarean section was there any distress fetal distress notice at the time of uh, delivery and how the delivery uh, process happened was it prolonged labor obstructed labor was uh, there any comorbidities associated in the mother whether there was maternal anemia preeclampsia eclampsia right any bleeding per vaginum that could indicate antepartum hemorrhage uh, leaking pv because that would uh, indicate uh, the predisposition to infections maternal fever pointing towards chorioaminitis right so all this uh, has to be uh, probed into you have to tell all this history antenatal birth history and then comes postnatal history we as pediatricians focus on the postnatal history because that's the domain we can control right so whether the child cried after birth whether the child had a uh, normal uh, physique there was no any structural abnormality whether the ch child required NICU stay, whether the child required resuscitation, whether the child was on neonatal ventilation for a prolonged duration of time, whether the child had neonatal jaundice that required phototherapy or exchange therapy, whether the child had uh, neonatal seizures, all these are should be taken into account. And finally, uh, after the description of the stay of the baby during the hospital in the initial one to five days when the child was uh, discharged and uh, whenever the child was discharged what was the status of the child at the time of discharge whether the child was feeding well active or whether the child was lethargic not feeding well not moving uh, his limbs lying lethargic very sleepy these are all the signs of encephalopathy then uh, immunization history also plays a role also eliciting uh, the early signs of cerebral palsy is really important these early signs could be positive of the movements in uh, one side of the body it could be hyperkinetic cp uh, which will include uh, increased uh, movements of the body or it could be vacant stare somewhere that would indicate neonatal seizures also it could be scissoring of the legs that is a doctor palsy whether the child uh, would be not walking and had a typical scissoring gait also difficulty in changing the nappy of the baby that is difficult to uh, extend the hips of the baby to change the nappy uh, excessive drooling of saliva inability to sit, sit and walk inability to maintain a vision with the mother inability to track objects all these are early signs of encephalopathy and should be considered uh, while eliciting the history uh, these are all uh, would be your uh, developmental history part then in the developmental history it is important to now mention each and every domain of the development when and how it was achieved and uh, what is the delay so that we can plan the treatment accordingly how much uh, rehabilitation the baby can be given what are the very weak areas that have to be taken first whether the child requires occupational therapy more or speech therapy more or the child requires uh, a certain form of anti seizure medication or the child requires physical rehabilitation so we have to mention each and every domain and what is the developmental age of the child in each of these domain and uh, by knowing the chronological age and developmental age you can easily uh, calculate the developmental question of the child and uh, plan the treatment accordingly i guess that's it developmental history uh, then describe the comorbidities, 
deficits in the vision, hearing, neurological seizure, feeding difficulties, speak, uh, speak, uh, sleeping diffic uh, difficulties. Also, uh, the child might have a certain bladder ball uh, discontinuity. So, all these com comorbidities you have to mention. And finally, uh, last but not the least, like your presentation has to be uh, described, which is mostly aspiration pneumonia in these children. Also, the nutritional status have to be assessed and immunization status also have to be assessed. And finally, uh, we come to the differential diagnosis. The broad the diagnosis would be perinatal asphyxia. It could be any neonatal seizures. It could be prolonged ventilation uh, leading to hypoxia. It could be uh, neonatal jaundice leading to encephalopathy or uh, it could be any antenatal event right that would have uh, predisposed to hypoxia in utero also there could be any structural abnormality of the child uh, i'm talking about brain structural abnormalities like lesencephaly schizencephaly right so these abnormalities either noticed on a usg scan of the mother during antenatal checkups or uh, after the birth on assessment right so all this should take into play and you will finally reach the diagnosis 80 percent of the times with this history only and there rarely you will need any supportive uh, investigations or imaging to prove that it is cp because you can uh, elicit it from the history that this might be the cause why the child is behaving that way or developed that way right so that's all for CP case presentation uh, is there any question or any doubt I can solve or help you guys I hope uh, uh, this session was helpful any question I can entertain no question uh, this is uh, mr adi 156 he's saying ma'am one question ask the question adi uh, time is myocardium is asking is your college private no uh, i have done my mbbs from pjms rotak which is a medical col uh, government medical college in haryana rotak and uh, now i am doing post graduation in sms medical college jaipur which is also a government college some people are writing okay bye how <laughs> was it that boring questions last call i think there is uh, all of your queries are cleared now no more questions okay so i think we should end our session right here uh, if all ha uh, mr adi i am jekin on hospital mein hu चलो अब ख़त्म करते हैं लाइव सेशन आई थिंक देर आर नो मोर एजुकेशनल और क्वेरीज रिलेटिंग टू सी पी एंड पीपल आर मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन माई पर्सनल लाइफ देर आस्किंग मी पर्सनल क्वेश्चन है सॉरी आई वॉन्ट एंटरटेन दो so ending the live session here uh, in case uh, you have any queries you can always dm me i would surely answer each of them uh, it might get late by 24 hours or so but i'll make sure i'll answer them and directly ask the question in the dm don't write hey hi i won't reply to them also uh, no personal questions please uh, i'm here to spread knowledge and awareness and I don't know whether I want to connect uh, that way with anyone else. So, 
let's end the session here i hope uh, this was very helpful to you because cerebral palsy case is very important okay all the best keep studying have the zeal to learn be enthusiastic and curious to learn things uh, i will uh, now regularly posting these videos interactive videos and live sessions with you uh, right now i am posted in uh, peer song pod so uh, my evening